Hello, sports fans and replay sports fans. It's me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke. And as you can tell by the title of the video, I am here with an update on my 1979 payoff pitch White Sox replay season. Now, uh, the objectives of this video are to show you the stats uh, at the quarter way point. I am a quarter of the way through the season. And then we will discuss the statistics of the players, which goes to the realism of the game, partly because, as I said, um, when I launched the project, I'm not doing it as played. So I am making certain decisions for players myself. So we will look at that and we will look at um, the overuse or non-overuse of each player. Um, it's all in my spreadsheet. And I have this notebook, which in which I am keeping my um, all of my box scores. So you can see all you can see that I do have all of the box scores so far. Well, take my word for it, I do. So I have all of the box scores so far for every game. And uh, and as I said, we will look at a spreadsheet that has all of the statistics for the team and even show some of the statistics for the actual 1979 White Sox so that you can do a comparison of where we are right now and where we seem to be headed. So with uh, out further ado, let's get into that. All right. So here you can see I've got a spreadsheet which appears to have the White Sox logo and it does and it says through game 41 40 played because as you will recall possibly um the second game of the season for us had been canceled rained out as you know i got one of those um odd occurrence plays and the game was rained out in the sixth inning and it was still tied at zero so the game didn't count so we've only really played 40 games. So let's take a look at some of the statistics of some of the players so far. And I will also talk about, I've got some players highlighted. I will talk about that. Um, but anyway, we will get to things as we get to them. So let's look at uh, the, uh, right here, I've got the batting average and on base percentages for everybody. You can see Thad Bosley hitting a robust 400 after 20 at bats so i'm just going to scroll a little bit here just so you can see what everybody's doing um they're on bases and their batting averages at least and they're um you know um at bats and you can see we've got jim morrison yellow george orty yellow claude l washington yellow and i will explain that in a minute so right now, as you can see, the, the White Sox are hitting 264 with a 311 on base percentage. Um, I will also talk about my, my general impressions of the game after um, a quarter of the season. Um, and really, the game itself, I love the game itself. I love it. I love playing that game better than, going to be a little sacrilegious here, better than stratomatic say what as far as the board game goes now strat as you know has a computer game and payoff pitch doesn't but as far as the board game version this is my favorite game in the world to play so um you got rich wortham steve trout kravak baumgarten and we will let me see if i can page over here and uh show you some of their other statistics because their ERAs are over here. And there's the pace. We will talk about that in a minute too. But you can see 248, 313. These are all, then I put the starters at the top. So 248, 313, 310, 494. I apologize for the fact that it's not all in the screen. But if it's all in the screen, it's going to be so small that you won't be able to see it on the video. I want to make sure that it's video, um, you can see it. But anyway, let's look at the bottom line here. The bottom line is that the team has a 367 
earned run average and a 136 whip. Now, let's go down and look at the actual 1979 White Sox. And you can see batting wise, we hit 275 with a 333 on base percentage and 127 home runs. Now, the 127 home runs, that was the final total. We are only a quarter of the way through the season, so you wouldn't expect us to have 127 home runs. But you can see we're hitting 264 with a 311 on base percentage, which is lower than both of the actual totals from 1979. Oh, and by the way, we are right now 24 and 16 after 40 games played. And at this point, I believe I went back and I I tried to do the math, but you know, me and math, we don't get along real well. But it appeared to me that the actual White Sox of 1979 at this point were 21 and 20. So there you go. The offensive stats are a little higher, and our actual, uh, the actual offensive stats were higher than the replay stats, better than the replay stats. But um, on the pitching side, and this, I believe, goes hand in hand with the offensive stats being not as good. The um, actual uh, pitching statistics are better than the real team. First of all, the real team was 73 and 89, which is on a pace to be under 500. But we are not on a pace to be under 500. And the actual earned run average was 410 and the actual whip was 1.407. But as you can see, the actual replay earned run average is 367, and the actual whip is 136. So um, that's where we are with that. Now, to discuss the guys in yellow. Um, Jim Morrison is yellow because here, if we go down the, remember, just bear in mind that the, the three guys here offensively, uh, that are in yellow are Jim Morrison, George Orta, and Claude L. Washington. Because the reason is, if you slide over, you can see that Jim Morrison is running at 139% of usage right now. Um, uh, whoever it was, Orta or Washington, maybe it, this was Washington, was at 128. And Orta was at 121. Now, there are other guys that are running at over. Like if we go over here, uh, this is Harry Chappis and Joe Gates. Now, Harry Chappis and Joe Gates, although they are running ahead right now, they're only running ahead because I used them early, but I do not have any plans. Though I don't want to say I don't have any plans to overuse Chappis. I might overuse him, but in the end, it it probably, I want to say, I, I'm guessing it won't be 127%. But these guys, um, Claudel Washington, Orta, all right, so Orta was second, and Morrison, these guys are going to be overused. And that's why they're in yellow, because I am playing them um, at a level that um, is just, I'm, it's going to be unavoidable that I'm going to overuse them. So I don't know if it's going to be worse than this or better than this. And if we go down here to the pitchers, you can see um, we have also got Trout. Trout is in yellow. I don't remember, um, and maybe somebody out there in the audience can leave uh, a message, leave a, um, a comment and let me know, but I'm not sure why Steve Trout, because in real life, Steve Trout only had like 158 innings pitch. But he was quite young at the time, so I'm guessing maybe they had brought him up during the season at some point. But anyway, he's running at 136%, and he's yellow because, yes, he is going to be uh, overused. That's going to happen. That is absolutely going to happen because the way I'm running the team is Wortham Trout, Kravec, Baumgarten, and to some degree, Barrios are the starting rotation. 
And I want to try to stick to that as much as I can. Um, I was told by Kurt Berglund that I would learn a lot about this team by playing the game. And one thing that I have apparently, uh, that I learned is that apparently the real White Sox management, the manager, field managers, did a lot of mixing and matching and putting guys um, from the bullpen in the starting rotation at times throughout the season. Mike Proley started games. Uh, Randy Scarberry started games. Guy Hoffman may have started a game or two. Rich Hinton even started a game or two, has been known to. Fred Howard started games. Ron Schuler started games. So basically, and, and this plan never works. If you remember the Orioles of a few years ago when, um, when Showalter took over the Orioles, one, one of the first things he did was set a five-man rotation and stuck to that as much as he could possibly stick to it. Because the managers prior to Showalter were shuffling guys in and out from the bullpen to the rotation, back to the bullpen to the rotation, back to the bullpen to the rotation. That doesn't work, and I don't like doing it, and I'm not going to do it. Now, another thing that I do as a manager, and it's just my managerial style, is I like to have the starters go as long as they can possibly go. If you aren't tired, if you aren't getting, well, I don't know if they're tired because they're cards, but if you're not in trouble, if you're pitching and you're just smooth sailing, I don't know if that sounded like a sailboat on smooth sailing, but if you're smooth sailing, I'm not taking you out. I don't do that. And I wouldn't do it as a real manager either. Although I'd have to deal with real fatigue and real, like, being out in the sun and, you know, getting worn down. But, and I don't have to deal with that with cards. But that's my style. Starters go until they are not effective anymore. Um, and this game lends itself to that because um, of the fatigue rules. And the fact that this was 1979 where guys were still pitching, starting pitchers were still pitching a significant number of innings. So that's my style. I don't, so this is why really, if you, if you look over here, all of these guys here are relievers and they're all running at under a hundred percent. And there's a reason that they're all running at a hundred, under a hundred percent. And that reason is that I just, don't bring in relief if I don't have to. So that's my managerial style, and that's how we're going to do it. Um, and kind of similarly here with these guys, Jim Morrison is the best guy that I can – he's one of the best players the team has. I don't – again, I don't know with Jim Morrison. Was he a rookie that year, and he was brought up during the year at some point? So I'm going to play Jim Morrison. Because as I said, anybody who ended the year with the White Sox is on my roster. And I want to make one side note to that, and that is Rich Hinton. I, I, I dropped the ball on Rich Hint. He did not finish the year on the White Sox. He was traded during the year. So my plan, since I dropped the ball on that, is I'm going to keep Rich Hinton until on the roster until he was no longer on the roster, which is at some point in June. And then he will be off the roster and I won't use him after June. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, that's, that's where we are with this um, replay. So my general impressions of the game right now are the run scoring and particularly walks and strikeouts don't seem to occur as as frequently or as at high a level as they did in real life. For instance, if you look at the scores from 1979, you're going to see games where one or the other of the teams involved in the game scored 14 runs, scored 12 runs, scored 10 runs. I can tell you that a game where I scored 10 runs is rare, extremely rare. Maybe it happened twice. And I don't remember one where I scored 14 or 15, but, or, or where the other team scored 14 or 15. It may have happened, but if it happened, it happened like once. So, um, but it happened several times already to this point in the real schedule for the White Sox. 
So the run score, basically the offense and the run scoring seems to be down from real life. At least that's what it looks like a quarter of the way into the season. Now, the question I pose to everybody is, is that necessarily a bad thing? Because, okay, you know, the run scoring isn't happening as much. But it's not happening as much for us just the way as it's not happening for the other teams. So is it okay to look at this as like an alternate reality instead of this is this game really repeats real life? Now, of course, some of it, and I'll acknowledge this freely, some of it is that I'm not using the players the way that they were used. I'm not going with um, as-played lineups. You know, that sort of thing. That's part of the issue. That I, I understand that. But you've got 264 and 311 as compared to 275 and 333. Now, I'm not going to say that in three quarters of a season, we can't get our totals up to this. But from what I've seen, that isn't going to happen. And then you've got, you know, 410 earned run average of one almost a 1.41 whip as opposed to um, a 367 earned run average and a 136 whip. And again, I'm not going to say that with three quarters of a season left, those totals can't come up. They certainly can. And we have played a lot of bad teams early. So that could also be part of it. You couple playing some bad teams like Toronto and Oakland early with uh, the fact that I'm playing guys like Morris, overplaying guys like Morrison, who may not have even appeared yet on the roster for the White Sox in the in the real 1979 season, and overplaying guys like Trout, who again may not have even appeared yet. So um, you couple those two things, and yes, you're going to have changes, you're going to have differences, but I don't know that these differences are almost totally due to the way I'm running the team as opposed to just the game isn't built to mimic the run scoring and the offense at the level that it really happened. And again, I would submit to you that that's fine. That's fine. Then you just, hey, this is an alternate reality. This is a 1979 that was never going to happen, and it never did happen, and the run scoring was down. Like 1969, right? Was it 1969? Where the run scoring was down, and then they, you know, lowered the mound and all this other stuff. Um, don't remember. But anyway, it was, it was a year in the 60s. But the run scoring was down so much that they that baseball actually made physical changes to increase the run scoring, like, raise, like uh, lowering the mound and eventually um, adding a DH in the American League. But is it okay to say, hey, I'm doing this replay and this game doesn't emulate offensive scoring to the level that the real scoring happened, but that's okay. This is my alternate reality, and I'm going to play in this alternate reality. And by the way, I, I don't know. I did not look this up. I meant to look it up. I didn't. And if somebody wants to leave a comment, leave a comment. Let me know. But 24 and 16 might have been like <laughs> right up near the top of the AL West standings at this point in 1979. So if this keeps up, we may actually be a playoff contender. Dare I say that? So anyway, that's my, that's my take. That's my, um, you know, talking about the game and the, um, and what's happening. I love the game. I love the board game because let me tell you something. The Stratomatic, I've tried several, several times in the past of my life to, to play just how I'm doing this, taking one team and playing it all the way through the season and keeping by hand the stats on all of, uh, uh, all the stats on 
the the one team that I was taking through the season and try to get to the end of the season, and I only did it once. If I had to guess, I'd say I I tried it 15 or 16 times, at least 15 or 16 times, and only was able to get through the season once because of either I lost interest in playing all of those games and keeping all those stats, or I lost interest in the team itself, or I lost interest in playing the game itself that much. But I can tell you that none of that is going to happen with this season. I am not going to lose interest in playing this game because I love the game. I'm not going to lose interest in these White Sox because I love these guys. And, um, you know, we'll see. But what are your guys' thoughts? I just wanted to share that. This is the quarter way point, and uh, we are going to uh, keep going from here, and I will, I will do periodic updates as it seems appropriate. But that's going to be it for me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, signing off.